All right. So good morning. Good morning. Hey, what is today? All right. So hey, would you glance at that and see if we're live and looks good? Make sure it's not head cut off, anything like that. Everything awesome. Okay. Very good. So we are rocking out chapter five. What is today? Best day, Best day ever. Why are we here? To get the tools to build the fearless champions. Nice, 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 nice. Hey, guess what? Your body will respond to whatever you ask it to. And here's what we're going to learn in chapter five. We have already asked our bodies and our brains to learn so much. What we are talking about, we kept going back to the analogy of building a house. And when we talk about chapter eight being the plans, we talk about the structure, the function, the concrete, the putting the framing up. We talk about putting the roof on. You guys, we are sheetrocked in. We are to a point where we are putting all the final touches on this house that we have been building for two solid months. This is the end. This is the final push. You're going to be so surprised at how much you already know. It's because I've been planting seeds all along the way. So let's let them put the miracle, miracle grow on them and let them rock. So we start off on page chapter 88. What page? 88. Nice. Okay. So what I want you to think of is, and this might help if you work in terms of like bullets. This might be better for you. So again, if we're talking about the anaerobic system are we talking about things on the right side of the line or the left side of the line right side of the line so these are our quick powerful burst high intensity low uh, low endurance high force production say I remember. I remember okay so one of the things we need to see is as far as what happens when we train on the anaerobic side of the line and I'm in the middle part of this paragraph. You guys, we're going to see improvements in muscular strength. We're going to see improvements in power. We're going to see muscular hypertrophy. We are going to see a little bit of muscular endurance improvement, even though we're on the right side of the line. We're going to see an improvements in motor skills. We're going to see improvements in coordination. We see these whenever we do strength training, whenever we do agility training, speed training, interval training, and plyometric drills. So all of these things, these are the core foundational movements to get these benefits. So on show off day, I am going to ask you what some of those improvements are that you see. And they are listed right there in the middle of that paragraph. <coughs> Okay, so remind me of what the Fab Five way we train is. Large, Large muscle groups. Heavy. Heavy resistance training. Moderate to high volume. Short rest intervals. Two years of experience. Yes, this is when we start to see changes come into the body. Now, you already know this. Of all the different energy pathways and energy systems in the body, the body systems, which one arrives first on the scene to create change? Nervous. The nervous system. And so you'll see there in that right-hand column, these neurological adaptations. You guys, this begins in your higher brain center and continues down through the level of the individual muscle fibers, okay? And again, with central adaptations, again, it says that it starts in the higher brain where the intent is to produce maximal levels of muscular force, causing motor cortex activity. So when you see, it's right there under that first paragraph in central adaptations. So here's what you need to understand. Your brain has a thought, oh, I'm about to lift up that car. It's a big thought, yes? So your brain says, I'm about to do something big. So following the thought of that, the right neurons, the right muscle fibers get fired up about getting to do that job. And we're gonna talk about some things with how that neuromuscular system actually works together without a doubt. Now, a quick pause on page 89 in your book. <coughs> And I can see right here that um, Nick's books have already been marked up. Okay, this is what I did to my book. If you will look 
all of these different sports come into play over here on the left-hand column. These first two columns, the phosphagen system and the glycolytic system, this is every single thing we know about chapter five. So these two columns are chapter five. Now, if you look over in that far right-hand column, which side of the line are we now talking about? The left-hand side. So this is a great summation of every single thing that will be in chapter six as we move forward. This would be a great chart for you to continue to refer back to. What I believe is, I believe you already know this because what kind of people are you? Smart, Smart people. And we've been talking about the breakdown of the muscle fibers for so long. Okay, so now that we've talked about that, jump over to page 90 with me. Now on page 90, you see this great picture of the thought starting in the cortex of the brain and then as it processes down, the spinal column, and it jumps all the way in to each individual <coughs> motor unit. And I know that's sort of a simplified <coughs> picture, but it should help you see how the nervous system actually responds very quickly after that adaptation from the thought that starts in the frontal lobe. Okay. Now, I understand that one of the things that we try to do in our business is we try to ensure that people make change happen for themselves. Is it your job to change people? No. Do you remember? It's your job to do one, two things. What? Inspire. Inspire people to change themselves and to keep yourself inspired so that you keep doing that. Now, if you're needing ammunition for why people should Fab Five train and get moving, you guys, it is listed on page 90 in that chart. This is every single reason that we need to train the body. Friends, this is the recipe of the fountain of youth. And you know what's interesting? <laughs> we can talk to people about, oh, guess what? You're gonna be able to store more ATP. That may not mean something to them until you explain to them what happens when you run out of ATP. Yeah. You're dead. So if you can tell people that you're going to be storing more ATP, that might all of a sudden have some meaning for them. But let me tell you what's your number one thing that's going to catch people's attention. And unfortunately, it's the number one thing, but it's listed at the very bottom of the chart. <laughs> what's listed at the bottom of the chart? body composition. People don't really care about their ligament strength. They don't care about ATP. They don't care about different enzymes going on in their body. But if you tell people, hey, you want to get leaner and you want to lose body fat, most people say what? Sure, sign me up. This is when you say you have to anaerobically train because this is how you're going to stimulate those enzymes. This is how you're going to really start to see those changes come into play. Okay? Take a pause, take a breath. 